I've had a dim bulb tester for years and I think I'm going to build myself a new one and this time I'm going to put a bypass switch so that I can take it out of circuit without actually having to unplug anything. We'll put everything into an electrical box and it'll be nice and neat. Let's check it out. Today we're going to make a new dim bulb tester because the one I made before was kind of crude. It did the job but uh, it was crude and since we're using a dim bulb a lot more now when I'm working on tube gear it just makes sense to make a new one and I'm going to use recycled parts. This is the schematic for it. So we have our plug, we have our socket, and we have our hot wire that's going to go through the 100 watt incandescent lamp, the lamp holder here, and end up at the plug and our neutral is connected directly to the plug and we're going to put a safety ground on so that if it is plugged into a three prong outlet that's not on an isolation transformer there will be ground carried through. And I'm going to put a switch on here so that the lamp can be bypassed. So we can, if the switch is off, all the current has to flow through the lamp and if the switch is on, then it'll just connect it as it did before. And I'm going to use recycled parts to do this. So I have an, I have an electrical box, I have a, a switch, and I have a plug, and I have a three prong cord. And of course my lamp socket will figure out some way to attach this, kind of big, but I think I probably will be able to attach this to the side of this somehow. We'll figure out a way. I should really find a smaller light socket. This is just one from a four inch electrical box and this is actually the one that I had mounted on the wall for really cheap. It doesn't even have a real screw in socket. It's just it's just plastic. But this will do the job. I, I should be able to put a couple screws through here just to mount this down. I'm sure I can figure out a way to mount this to this box where it will work. Somehow. We'll figure it out. Or I'll find another light socket that's smaller. But I think we'll get this one mounted. Let's uh, let's wire this up. First things first. Bring the power cord in through the back of the electrical box. And we'll expose the ground and the neutral because those are going to go directly to the receptacle. So we'll just take off a bit of insulation here. This will be a strand of the wire to take off a little bit more because I'm going to have to do a complete wrap. And this, this power cord is only rated at about 7 amps, but that's still more than we're going to need because the current limit on this is going to be about 1 amp when it's in current limited mode. Because after all, it is a 100 watt light bulb that we are using. So first things first, let's uh, get the right size bit on the... Uh, the screwdriver. I always get the wrong size, right? This is this is a Robertson, but it's a smaller. It's a number one Robertson. So first things first, we'll connect up the neutral line. To this cheap dollar forty nine plug. I think that's what the plug was. Maybe not. It's a recycled one. And then we'll connect up our ground as well <clears throat> to the ground screw. Safety first, boys and girls. Safety first. And now our hot wire is going to go to the switch. But we're also going to have two wires that go out from the switch out to the uh, plug so that the and then back to the hot terminal which is the smaller of the two plugs or smaller of the two pins uh, i'm going to grab some just regular wire here now the way we're going to wire this and if this wire is it should be long enough i think we're going to hook this up to the switch to the hot side and to one of the wires going to the lamp it goes to the switch so twist these two together and then these two go to my switch And this goes to one side of the lamp. 
the other side of the switch goes to the other side of the lamp as well as over to the plug. side goes to the plug as well as to the the lamp holder so we'll connect one wire there and then the other wire here is going to go to the other side of this switch same same side but the other screw terminal and then these two wires go out the box and go to the to the uh, the lamp holder Okay, so now these two wires are what's going to connect to the lamp. As you can see, when the switch is in the off position, the current is going to come out through this lead into the lamp and then back to the plug. But when the switch is turned on, it'll bypass the lamp because then it'll just go straight to the plug. So that's the idea, is that we have an outlet that can be either fed through the incandescent lamp as a current limiting source or it can be bypassed. So now I can mount my uh, my components in the box and then bring the wires out the back to connect to the lamp socket and then we'll mount the lamp socket onto the uh, onto the box so let me get the let me get the plug in place and the switch in place we'll get this mounted down to this electrical box There has to be a faster way. That's where the good old cordless screwdriver comes in handy for doing this type of stuff. Because these screws take forever to put in. I do have a, a cover plate to go on, but I'm going to have to trim it down so that it will fit. I've got my two wires, which I can bring out the back here. Hopefully they're long enough to tie down to the, the uh, light itself. The light is going to mount on the back here. Okay, we'll now mount the light bulb. Or the lamp holder, I should say. attach this. I've already put a hole in the side of the uh, in the box that's large enough to fit this screw. And screw the lamp holder down. Always got to get the right size bit for this. Everything I use is different sizes.
that'll screw down there nice and tight. And then I think I'll put another, I'll drive another screw, if I can, through the plastic here, drill a hole through the plastic, another screw to hold this up here and maybe cut this off. I'll have to get a cutting wheel or something for that or a saw to cut through the plastic, but uh, another screw through here to uh, secure this down to the box. So I'm going to use my trusty Dremel tool to drill a hole through here. Now I can put a screw through to hold this lamp socket in place. All right, that'll hold the lamp holder in place now. If I can cut this off, that would be great. Or, or just cut the, I can, might just cut the, cut back this a bit so that it'll fit. I could do that too, cut the, the plate back a bit. Uh, maybe we'll cut this off if I can. Oh, my cutoff wheel will work. This cutoff wheel might do it. I got a cutoff wheel for the Dremel. That might uh, cut through this stuff. We'll try it and see if this wheel will cut. I'm going to have dust everywhere. That's the problem, but we'll see. We'll see if this will cut it. It should. Oh, yeah. For this, I gotta go get myself a face mask. I don't need to be breathing this stuff, that's for sure. That solved that problem, doesn't it? Cool. I hardly got anything in my eyes with my safety goggles on, of course. Maybe cut off the corners a bit on this box. Let the cover plays in place. Snap it off where I've scored it. Voila, that fits. Excellent. And there we have it complete. My dim bulb tester. Now I just need to mount this. I've got it set so that it's pretty flush at the back here. So I just need to mount this. I'll mount this up on the wall or something. But it doesn't even have to. It can just sit there. Screw your light bulb in there. Plug your unit under test. When the switch is on, you've got full power. When the switch is off, we're limiting current. I'll hook it up and show you guys how it works. So here we have our little vacuum tube radio under test. The switch is off. I've got it plugged directly into mains. And when I turn on the power, we should see the bulb light up slightly. As the unit starts to draw current, which it just did, you saw the light glow there a bit. 
for the inrush. Then as the tubes start to warm and go into conduction, you know, start drawing a little bit of power. So, okay, radio is working, nothing has gone Nova on it, light is not lighting up bright, if there was a short, this lamp would be lighting up really bright. Okay, now I feel, okay, I can throw the main switch on, which will give the unit full power. As you'll hear, it'll get a little bit louder as it gets to full power. And that's how a dim bulb test works. If I wanted, I could put additional light bulbs and additional switches. So. I could put two lamps, for example, in parallel so that I could run a lower wattage lamp and then a higher wattage lamp and with the combination of the two of them would give you, of course, more current without having full current. For most tests, so a 100 watt bulb is more than all this needed. So that's a dim bulb tester. So there's my dim bulb tester mounted to the wall. It's screwed into a stud. I've put it at an angle only because room. I don't have room. It'll invade the space of my clock one of my many clocks that's around here but there we have a switch limited current and full plug my device under test into here normally it will be in the limited current mode so that's a, a dim bulb tester now properly put into a box so all the guys that were concerned about the safety of the old one not that it was left plugged in or energized or anything, only when it was in use. But this just makes things a little bit safer, and it gives me the ability to bypass. I guess I could have written bypass on there, right? But bypass and limited current, or full and limited current. Anyway, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.